Welcome to uh, hopefully what will be a, a brief video here um, setting up for my playthrough of one of the scenarios of Battle for Ardennes, SPI simulation publication games uh, from <coughs> 1978. I have a previous video where I kind of do an overview and go through the rules. Uh, but for this video I, I want to focus on uh, one of the scenarios. There's three 1944 based scenarios. The one we're doing is Clairvaux. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Then you've got St. Vith to the north. And Selys, which was kind of the, the battle before the Meuse, um, as the Germans got as far as they could. Uh, I picked this one <coughs> mainly because, hey, it's got Baston on the 101st. You know, I'm a big fan of Band of Brothers. And so we'll start with this one. Hopefully we'll have time to fit some other ones in, and I'll slip in some information on the Selys playthrough. I... I did a little earlier, but um, yeah, so this is the scenario here. We've got the Vassal mod up, which you can download. Um, and right now, here I have the uh, special rules for this scenario. A uh, nice map of what actually happened. Uh, we see that this held against the uh, Folks Grenadiers. Well, the main axis came right up here, and they had to wash around Baston, which was obviously isolated with 101st and CCB of the 10th Armored. And I believe we see the beginnings of Patton's 3rd um, Army counterattack, 4th Army here coming to relieve them. So, that's what happened in real life. Uh, we'll see what happens in the game. So, looking at the special rules, we talk about unit deployment. Pretty much you're printed on the map, and the scenario already has everybody in their setup hexes, the vassal scenario. Um, they do mention the reinforcements. They do come in on the edge of the map, since we're only using one map. And if we come down here, we see most, well, pretty much all the reinforcements are the United uh, are the U.S. We see uh, the rest of the 10th Armored here, CCA and CCR. Wait, and then uh, CCB comes in with the, uh, with the 101st, which actually has four regiments. So we'll see where they end up. So initial American reinforcements don't really trickle in here on turn four, and then in turn six, uh, the 18th we get some, and then uh, we get some big reinforcements here. Let's see what we got. Yeah, fourth armored. Um, this may represent. There's the rest of fourth armored, and we got the fifth infantry. 80th, or is that an 80? Yeah, it's an 80. And the 26th. So. Um, and I don't know where these all appear here. They may mention this here. Uh, German players all come from the east edge. One reinforcement. U and re U.S. units in the following hexes start. Okay, we got all that too. Um, so my guess is, I'm not quite sure. Maybe these will. I'll have to examine the rules, but I would think. Oh, here we go. We got letters. Um, so maybe. It's on the counter. Yep, P. P. Looks a P through P through S and then Q through R. Okay, that's good to know. I don't know where S is. Oh, it's way down here. So all most of these U.S. reinforcements are coming in along this side of the map here. That would be the southern direction. This map is kind of tilted. Um, let's see where these guys come in. H through L. Okay. P. Okay, so they're coming in. Looks like the armor division here. The 10th is coming in from there, but uh, 101st is probably going to be coming down these roads here. Um, yeah, 101st, game turn 6 on any road on the west edge. Yep. So they'll be coming in along here. So that's good to know. So it does look like we get a chunk of Patton's counterattack actually. We've got an armored division and two infantry. That's a whole core and supporting forces. So right at the end here. Um, so let's go ahead now that we've talked about what's going to happen. Uh, reinforcements start trickling on turn six really. <coughs> so the Germans have to act fast. Uh, special rules. Game turn one. No German units may move. Oops. Uh, German engineers may not build bridges, um, but they can do everything else. So potentially they can attack. Um, if we look at the German setup, uh, this is 116th. 
Looks like they're up on the front lines, Panzer Division. And we've got an infantry, the 560th, supporting artillery. Got Panzer Lair lurking in the woods here. And uh, we've got uh, 26 folks grenadier, it looks like. And the 2nd second second Panzer. There, it looks like they're doing the initial attack. Here's the 5th Falschemjäger with some core assets, naval werfers. Uh, Panzers, and then we've got the 352nd, oh, it's Omaha Beach fame, reconstituted up here on the front lines. Uh, 276th, yeah, this looks like the three uh, infantry divisions, which pretty much all they're going to be able to do is just hold the line. These dotted lines are the west wall, which the Germans get good defense. And we do see a few really penal battalions, huh. fortress. Similar. So this may probably be static here. So the first turn, no Germans can move, but they can attack. Um, the other problem is this is the Aur or Ur, I don't know how to pronounce it, river. And if I put it back, all the bridges are blown. So the Germans are going to have to um, build bridges to get across. Where did visible go? Okay, sorry. There we go. Um, yeah, we do see the blown bridge markers here, here, here. So if I got the rules right, the only units that can cross are infantry, mech infantry, their whole movement factor, which they can't do on the first turn. So uh, the Germans are going to be doing attacks across the river here. That's not very good. But we'll see how that plays out. And this unit apparently is on... This is a west wall hex, and uh, they're on the other side. I'll check that. I guess that's right. I'll verify that. Let's see. Okay. Uh, so, first turn, and then on the first turn, only one U.S. unit may be moved on game turn one. And you can't blow bridges. Okay, not much on game turn one there, except attacking... Game turn two, German restrictions are gone, but only U.S. mech units and the one unit that was moved in game turn one can move. No other special restrictions. Now may attempt to blow bridges on game turn two. Uh, U.S. artillery, barrage, and final protective have for the first two game turns. Keep an eye on that. All German, pretty much surprise, all German attacks made on game turn one get a bonus shift to the right, in addition to divisional integrity, and they also roll on the German initiative die roll chart, which we saw um, last time. Yep, so this they use this, not this, um, for the th entire game. Okay, that's good to know. That's a nice advantage. German units automatically in supply for the first six game turns. Nice. Starting with game turn nine, though, they start um, experiencing the uh, the supply problem. Yeah, let's look at that. German supply shortage. Here we go. Um, we're doing uh, Clairvaux. So, yeah, second Panzer could be out. Let's see. Roll the dice once. Any units listed on the result are out of supply. i got to get a 6 to dodge this bullet. So they do talk about uh, Panzer Lair. This is an optional unit. So if they roll a 3, nobody's out of supply. So 3 or 6. 9th Panzer and 15th Panzer Grenadier. So they'll be affected by that. Um, and then they've got some interesting stuff here. German player may execute his mech units from the map on the west edge. From any road hex, 1601 to 2305. The Germans don't get victory points, but the U.S. does get victory points for how many mech units are left on the board over four. So the Germans need to pretty much get all their mech units off except for four, so the U.S. does not get any victory points. So that's one. There's this draw to push off the board past Baston and actually cross over. Yeah, here's the edge right here. Um, no air power. 
Okay, it makes sense because they launched the attack in bad weather. All bridges across the Ore River are blown. Um, and you need to build bridges to use the road again. Makes sense. Two units of the 560th Folks Grenadier and 116th Panzer Division must be exited from the game from the game map by game turn six and eight respectively. That's these units. Uh, is that yeah? There's a 116th. There's a 560th Folks Grenadier. So all of these units must be exited. Um, the north edge, that's coming up here. If they aren't, the Allied player removes them and gets victory points for them. But if the German gets them off on the allotted times, then nobody gets any victory points. Uh, 560 gets divisional, two people. The Penal and Festung must stay on the west wall. Units of 9th and 28th are not eligible for it. So the U.S. 9th Armored and 28th Infantry are not eligible for divisional integrity. So need to take count of those. And let's answer the question of how do we win. One victory point for each town on the map, except Baston. Two victory points for each city that they occupy at the end of the game. Uh, Germans get one victory point for Baston. And one victory point for each U.S. unit eliminated. Okay, that's good. U.S. gets eight victory points for Baston. Definitely in their best interest to hold on to this one. And one victory point for each German infantry. And two for each mech or artillery. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, battalion size units don't count for victory. And then here's the rule. Count the number of mechanized units of Germans on the map at the end of the game. Subtract four, and that's how many victory points the U.S. gets. So the Germans want to move off their mech units, if possible, by the end of the game. And then you do a, a ratio. Uh, if any side is greater than one to one, it's a marginal. Any side two to one or better, wait, one to one, yeah, one point five to one or better, operational, two to one, strategic. So, and then there's an optional one, I think, where the Germans get more units and the Allies maybe are more prepared, but we're going to be looking at the historical. So looking at this, game turn one, um, probably going to be an attack here. Uh, that's going to be a tough attack. Across the river to an improved position. Um, this attack may go off. Again, though, across a river, improved position, but they do have artillery that can help out. Let's see, these units, yeah, that's potentially good artillery here, too. Um, yeah, no divisional integrity because nobody can move. Fifth Falschemjäger, uh, but there's probably a third one. Yeah, so that's not going to get divisional, but... Uh, and then the other rule is, with artillery, normally you can only put one onto an attack for defense or attack, but the Germans in the beginning of their offensive can combine, so hopefully this will help too. And it looks, well, I don't know about this attack, it's not very strong, and there's no supporting artillery. So the first turn, I think the German goal is just hopefully successfully get across the Ohr River and then leverage their engineers to rebuild the critical road hex bridges if they can clear them. So I'd say that's probably the first turn. Um, the U.S. can't do much. Only one unit can move on the first turn. Uh, probably this guy. Because he's got the most speed. Ninth Armor and CCR. Everybody else, well... They're really strung out. Yeah, ninth armored negative. Oh, boy. They're all... Second turn, all mech units can move. Um, wow. Basically, I think the U.S., the first few turns, are just going to be sitting on blocking positions on roads. Because uh, moving off roads is really slow. So that's the goal here, is to delay, give time for the first set of reinforcements to arrive, um, maybe and fortify Baston, and then uh, we'll see how far the Germans get. So, all right, this uh, looks like fun. Um, I would really love 
I've got, well, I'd love to replace these counters. I mean, they're they're very nice counters, very clear. I just, for old time's sake, I'd love to replace them with the actual counter scans, just for nostalgia effect. But, all right, so we're going to put this through our paces, hopefully in the next video. Um, probably going to be after the holiday weekend that I can take this, but I did want to get this uh, intro scenario video up um, real quick to set things up. So... Anyway, thanks for listening. If you like, click like. Comments appreciated, uh, always. And uh, yeah, if you want to be notified when I post stuff, especially in this series, um, please click subscribe. Otherwise, uh, because of the time of the year, I will end with happy holidays and see you in the next recording.